everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And back in September, when I started planning the limited edition 2019 Hanukkah colorway, I was deciding between three different glimmery yarn bases for this colorway. And it occurred to me that for this bonus video, I should dye all three in my planned colorway and then pick the base that way um, because these three different bases are from three different suppliers and they have slightly different characteristics. Today we are looking at Dio Supplier Silvery Sock, Wool to Dye for Shimmer Fingering, and Knit Picks Stroll Glimmer. All three of these sock yarns are fingering weight. They contain Superwash Merino and Nylon, but there's a little bit more variety in the actual sparkle. Dyer Supplier Silvery Sock is 60% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 20% Silvery Stellina. This is jam-packed and is full of some beautiful glittery sparkles. Wool to Dye For's Shimmer Fingering has a more regular sort of sparkly edge in it. Um, it uses Lurex, so this yarn is 90% Superwash Merino, 10% Lurex. Oh, I guess I was wrong, there's no nylon in here. But you can see that those Lurex threads sort of ply around with the yarn in a very regular way, which would give us a more sort of consistent, sparkly feature to our yarn. Finally, Knit Pick Stroll Glimmer has the most subtle sparkle of the three. This is 70% fine superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, and 5% stellina. The real two that I'm deciding between today are the Lurex Blend from Wool to Dye For and the Silvery Sock from Dyer Supplier. I love the huge impact of the sparkles in the Silvery Sock, but Lurex, I dyed it for the first time and really only time last year in the Hanukkah special. And the Lurex really popped after dyeing the yarn a more pigmented color, and it really sort of stood out. And that aspect was really, really cool to me. So that's why I decided to try it all out and see what the final colorway looks like. And I went for the Stroll Glimmer so that way we would also have something that's a little more subtle. Because who knows, that one might be my favorite sparkly base out of the three. Full disclosures, I am an affiliate marketer with Knit Picks and Dyer Supplier, which means that I have affiliate links and I earn a commission based on sales that I refer to those companies. And in the past, Dyer Supplier has sent me a lot of free samples to play around with. However, the yarn that I will be dyeing um, at the end for this limited edition colorway, I am purchasing myself. And so this is a true comparison of which one I like the best um, using the technique that I have in mind for today. I pre-soaked the yarn in plain tap water with no acid for a couple of hours, but 30 minutes would probably be sufficient. My vision for this colorway is based on the bonus yarn that I did after a Dye Pop PS episode, where I had a really saturated green and then layered navy speckles on top of that. The problem was that since I did the navy speckles second, I couldn't really tell where they were being placed because when the yarn was wet, I couldn't see them. So my plan today is to do some navy speckles first, and then we will over dye for a semi-solid tonal in a more like bright blue of some kind. And so then we'll end up with a really subtle colorway that does have some speckles and dimension, but fundamentally is like very saturated overall. Stellina can sometimes pick up color, but the one time I played with Lorex, it didn't, and so it really shined through the color. So I think it could be really, really cool. <laughs> I've laid out the 300 grams of yarn in my steam pan, and I added just four cups of plain tap water. Oh, I do need to add some acid, though. Let's add one, two tablespoons of white vinegar, and I'm going to just sort of move this around to mix things up, even though I had everything all laid out. 
just so that way we can get some acid everywhere. I'm also adding another two cups of water just to bring that volume up a bit. We'd get sharper speckles um, with the lower amount of water, but I don't mind there being some spread to this today. Pulling from another past video, I am mixing about a quarter teaspoon of some Dharma Dark Navy Acid Dye in with one tablespoon of uh, white sugar. Um, in theory, I would typically use citric acid for this and to do these sort of light speckles all over. However, um, citric acid can cause Selena to dull, so I decided that it was worth it to sort of dilute our acid dye so that way I don't go too, too heavy, even though I'm going pretty heavy here. Um, with some sugar, just, you know, standard white sugar that you would use for cooking. Um, there's going to be a lot left over, but yeah, I'm just doing sort of a light-ish uh, sprinkling of this with my hands. Yeah, as I said, if, if this were not, if I weren't dealing with Stelina, and I honestly don't know how Lurex deals with citric acid, then I honestly might have just used citric acid, but I think that this will give us sort of a nice starting point, and that's really good for the first layer. Um, I'm going to reduce the heat. Uh, let this sit, goodness, I think I want to let this sit for 10 minutes, and then I'll move around and we'll add some more speckles. While we are waiting, I wanted to zoom in so you could see these speckles that we were creating. Now I am going to flip the yarn over and we'll be flipping it probably a few more times because I want to make sure we get some good coverage with our speckles here. Um, The water is hot. You can see that we do get some like bubbles around the edge, but I find that like I can touch it sort of lightly and carefully without uh, hurting my fingers. But obviously, maybe you want to use tongs or something for this. It's based on your own comfort level. But you can see that those 10 minutes were enough for those colors to strike. We might have needed less, but if you flip too soon, the colors can spread more. It's all based on what you are going for. I continued adding a layer of speckles to this side, waiting 10 minutes, moving the yarn around more, adding speckles wherever I wanted it. Now the amount of speckles isn't exactly going to be even over all three skeins, but you know it's more of like the final feel is what I'm trying to suss out and figure out which one I like the final results of the best. And again, if you want sharper speckles, have a lower level of water, things will strike faster um, and not spread out as much if they have less water in contact. And if you want to trap heat in even more, you could cover this with some foil or something to keep the heat in. Of course, whenever I'm dealing with a dye powder, I'm wearing a respirator, safety glasses, and gloves for personal safety. I am really happy with the color coverage that we ended up with. When I'm dyeing yarn three in a pan, I find that I need to flip it probably about th four times total, or I guess three times, do like four rounds to get coverage throughout the whole skein. But I'm really happy with where we are right now, and I'm going to set these aside to cool. And once the yarn is completely cool, then we can go to the next step and over dye all of this so that way our speckles are on a different kind of colored background. I'm not going to wash the yarn before the next step so there is some vinegar in there but I really like this light because you can see the reflection off of our sparkles. Right now, this yarn really resembles the, especially this one, the yarn from the 
2018 Hanukkah special night eight where I did the Lorex yarn because I speckled it with blue. But let's get ready because we're gonna mix up some dyes and over dye this, yay! I'm planning to dye all three skeins together. It's possible one might absorb more color than another, but you know, we're gonna go for it and this is gonna be an approximation. Uh, I'm gonna aim for a 2% DOS of uh, Dharma Frozen, which tends to be a paler color overall, but it is a super, super bright blue and it's honestly one of my favorite colors. Uh, and so since we're doing 300 grams of yarn, I am measuring at six, yeah, 6.1, 6.2 grams of dye. And we're gonna use this to over dye uh, our speckled yarn. Now, when I go and do multiple skeins in this colorway for, uh, to make a lot to send out with the samplers, uh, at that point, um, I likely will make a big stock solution and then measure out a volume for each batch. But for now, um, this works pretty well. And I am using hot water to dissolve the dye in. And the total volume that we're dissolving it in doesn't matter right now because ultimately, it's the total amount of dye that's important, not the volume of water, since this is not a stock solution. In my eight quart cup, we've got 16 cups of cool tap water, and I am going to add our frozen color and sort of just rinse out this cup in here. And there's very little left in there. And now I do want to take our spoon and stir this up. I don't mind if there's a little bit of undissolved dye and we ended up with some speckles or something, but I do sort of want this color evenly distributed on our yarn. Now if everything's cold, I've not added any vinegar to the pot, but again, there is some acid left in our yarn. So things could start striking quickly. Um, but let's give this a go. Sort of putting it in, moving things around. I'm not really going for like dip dyeing, but I'm doing this slowly so that way I can try to make sure that we get this color access all the way around. And you can sort of get a hint of this bright blue color that we're aiming for with those very, very subtle now navy speckles. Um, and I am going to let this sit for about five minutes before we go ahead and add some vinegar just to allow this color to sort of move through. But ooh, that Lorex is really popping. That's really cool. Okay. I'll be back in five minutes. It's been five minutes and we're not really in any rush, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a quarter cup of white vinegar, which is equivalent to four tablespoons. And I am going to sort of mix this up by lifting up the yarn and lowering it back, giving it some nice movement. And I'm gonna let things sit another 15 minutes or so. Uh, the stove is not on right now, so we're still cool, and we're just sort of hanging out and chilling here. Um, and slowly, slowly um, giving all of this fiber access to the color. All right, it has been just a little over 15 minutes and I am going to just sort of pick this up and move it again just to look and see. There's a ton of color in there, which I expected, but I'm now going to turn on the heat and heat this up for uh, probably about 20 minutes. I expect it'll take about 10 minutes for the pot to come to temp and then we'll heat for an additional 20. After 15 to 20 minutes, I am going to turn 
turn the heat off and show you that the water is basically clear and ooh, check it out. From there you can see that the Lorex really pops more than the other ones. I mean the Sparkle Sock, you can see that Stellina in there. It just goes for what we're going to want in terms of like subtle or like mega bling. But anyway, I'm going to leave all of this in here to cool down for a bit and then eventually we'll remove it, let it cool completely so we can wash the yarn. I honestly don't know which one I want to use yet. They are all looking mega sparkly and actually the water has cleared so um, we can go ahead and go wash these right now. Let's wash our sparkly yarn. Right now my immediate impression is that the Lorex yarn uh, has a big impact in that you know I can see the Lorex from far away. And the other two, it's hard for me to tell the difference just at the moment. Um, I'd probably have to make sure I had them separated to see. Oh, now I can see the silvery sock. Um, the silvery sock is jam packed with that sparkle, and the sparkle also does stand out, uh, but not as much as the Lorax. I'm sure the sparkles, when we'll look at the sparkles when it's dry, I'm just adding some dish soap. Um, but really, they have different moves. And then the Knit Picks one is also lovely, and actually the Selena sort of pops on there too. Um, that silver playing really nicely against these blue shades. The other first impression, and we'll see when it's dry, is that the speckles feel like they have disappeared on the Lorex yarn. And I don't think they've actually disappeared. It's just because the contrast between that Lorex and the blue is so great, the subtle difference between the speckles and the bright blue sort of recedes a little bit. Um, but anyway, uh, we've set this yarn really well. I am going to finish rinsing out the soap, put this through the spin dryer, uh, hang those up to dry, and then we'll come back and take a look at the dry sparkles and finalize which one of these will be the limited edition 2019 Chemnitz Hanukkah Sparkle colorway. But what about all of the rest of the sugar sprinkles that we created? I mean, we don't want to leave that dye behind, right? Well, we're going to leave no dye behind and grab three skeins of Wool to Dye 4 Platinum yarn, two in fingering, one in DK, and go ham with these speckles in the same pan that we used for our original navy speckles. Once I am going to do this for the official colorway, I can reuse the sugar sprinkles through multiple batches, but this time, let's try to leave no dye behind and make something pretty. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it's the same base that I have been using for the whole Hanukkah special this year. This time, I didn't wait 10 minutes before I flipped the yarn, I just sort of speckled and flipped as I went. I think that this yarn is going to be a really nice contrast to the yarn that we're dyeing intentionally as the colorway. Here we have a wash of that pale navy, whereas we're going to go for something more saturated and brighter uh, with the over dyeing of the other one. So I'm really excited to compare all of this together in the end. But uh, we still have more dye powder, so I'm going to set this aside and we are gonna do this whole Leave No Die Behind project one more time off camera. If you can believe it, after doing those heavy speckles on six skeins of yarn, whew, there's still leftover dye. So I took a leftover dye pot from another project. It's got a little bit of a hint of orange left to it. And first I added some rinse navy. This came from the spoons when I first measured out the color and each time I rinsed my hands I saved that color in the sink. And then of course we had our leftover powder. Not a lot was left but enough to want to use on some yarn. 
So I just sort of rinsed out my cup, put it in, and then added some dry yarn to create one more leftover dye skein. <laughs> I don't know how much vinegar there was in our pot, but there was actually a lot, so plenty for dyeing this yarn. I washed the massive amount of Leave No Dye Behind yarn off camera. Here are the three sparkle colorways, and I guess I'm surprised that they feel as different as they do. I'm not sure it entirely shows up on camera either, though. Of the three, I guess if I was going to describe them, on our Lurex blend from Will to Die For, the Lurex dominates. The bright blue color is gorgeous, but this, and the speckles are definitely there. They're just really, really subtle. The color overall on the Silvery Stock Sock Yarn is less bright. The blue is a little more muted, and I'm not sure if this is because it's only 60% wool and there's a higher percentage um, of the Selena in there, but that grayish sort of tinge to the yarn created this beautiful jewel tone. It just doesn't have that brightness and pop that I was going for. And because things are more muted, again, the speckles don't pop as much. The Stroll Glimmer, which I threw in just for a lark, is beautiful. The blue is bright and you really can see those speckles. I enjoyed all three of these yarn bases, but I think I might want to use them for different things. When I want speckles to pop on a pigmented base, Stroll Glimmer is the best one for this. This Lorex blend is stunning. And I love that barber pull effect that you get from the Lurex that doesn't absorb any of the dye. I think that this would look a lot better on a hand-painted, variegated colorway, something dip-dyed where you had larger patches of color. So the Lurex could really shine, but you wouldn't lose some of those subtle details to the Lurex. The Silvery Sock is beautiful. The colorway it gives is more muted, and there's many cases where that could be beautiful. And honestly, I think if I had only dyed these two skeins, I would be pulling the silvery sock. I love this base, and I really wanted to use it for this colorway. But of the three, and with the colorway that I was envisioning and trying to create, I'm going to have to go with the Stroll Glimmer base. It is my favorite, and I think that the sparkles add to the skein, but don't overwhelm it in this colorway we created. As far as texture goes, the Stroll Glimmer is the softest. It has the most merino nylon compared to some of the other ingredients, uh, other ingredients, other fibers, and so it is extremely soft, and I've actually knit with this before, and I really like it. The Silvery Sock is still very soft, but it has a slight, like, I guess it's, it feels a little smoother, but not in like a soft, smooth way. But it's still, I think, a yarn that I would really enjoy knitting with. Um, I tend to be like more of a shawl knitter uh, anyway, and I think it would make for like a beautiful shawl like that. The Lurex Blend, it's not scratchy, but it's not not scratchy. It's a bit rougher than the others. I still think it wouldn't turn it into something stunning. Like the way, it doesn't sparkle as much because of the regular repeat of the Lurex, but it's shiny. Like it, the yarn feels metallic, whereas the other two feel more glittery. The one thing that I didn't do in this video that maybe would be a more fair comparison is if I was gonna compare Stroll Glimmer to the Dyer Supplier Sparkle Sock, and Wool to Dye For has, uh, they, have a, they have two different Stellina sock yarns um, that are comparable to this, but one with silver and one with gold, and I'm totally blanking on the name of that right now, but all of those have more similar proportions in the fiber content, so I think it would be like a more fair comparison. So this really 
this video really doesn't say anything about how I feel about the three different brands because I'm comparing apples to oranges here with these three different bases. I thought that the Lurex blend that I used in night eight of the Hanukkah special from 2018 was a lot softer, but I believe that contains some cashmere in it, whereas this one is just Superwash Merino and the Lurex. And for our leave no dye behind, we created two different colorways. Uh, one of them is just sort of a classic dip dyed in leftover dye, but then I also had fun doing some speckling, but instead of getting the speckles time to set completely, I kept moving the yarn around, giving us this lighter, dusty blue wash on the background. And actually, these two colorways look really awesome together. Usually when I film a no dye left behind, we end up with one or two one-of-a-kind colorway type skeins. Today, I have six skeins in this navy on pale blue speckled colorway. And that just shows how much leftover dye I had. What, I started with a quarter teaspoon of dye and a tablespoon of the sugar sprinkles. And not only was I able to dye the three sparkle skeins, but also all of these leftover skeins. But the good thing is that for the Hanukkah samplers, I needed a lot of Leave No Dye Behind skeins, and so this is a perfect addition to the sampler sets. It is also really fun to get a colorway that is so reproducible, especially when I'm mostly dying by feel. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And I hope that those of you who have one of the 2019 limited edition Hanukkah Sparkle Sock colorways love the way that this turned out. I am so excited by this blue. I absolutely love it. And I think that the technique worked just like the vision I had in my head. And you know from the way I talk that that doesn't happen as much uh, as I'd love. <laughs> Make sure you check out the 2019 Hanukkah special playlist for all the videos that have come out this week. I have had so much fun dyeing these videos and goodness, I'm not sure, but we might be close to saying happy new year and happy 2020. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications and leave a comment below. Which of these three bases do you like the best? Are you excited with the one I picked? Or do you wish that I had picked another one? Most of the yarn from the Hanukkah special did end up inside the samplers, and so it's not available in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. But a few skeins, such as these bonus ones, will be available there. And in addition, the shop is filled with over 100 skeins of hand-dyed yarn featured in videos on this channel, and so you should really go check it out because you can support the content that I'm creating here and bring home some beautiful hand-dyed yarn at the same time. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.